Thank you for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis YouTube channel. It is our prayer that you will be blessed with a word that will move you to be a blessing to others with what you hear here. Uh, let us pray before we get started. Our Heavenly Father, help us to hear your word and cause it to come alive in us for the purpose of us being more than just hearers of your word, but doers also. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, we are focused on Mark chapter 7, verse 20 through 23. And for your reading pleasure, you can read uh, verse 14 through 23. But we've been on this lesson for uh, quite a few weeks right now. And so we've just narrowed it down to verse 20 through 23. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 says, And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. And all of these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Our subject for this lesson is pride, pride. Now, pride is the quality or state of being proud. It's having excessive self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talent, beauty, color of skin, wealth, rank, title, abilities, looks or appearances, education, my religious affiliation. Too often we act as though our religious denomination has it together and are right completely. With God uh, based on what we have done instead of what Jesus has done for us. And the only way we can be right with God is based upon what Jesus did for us on Calvary. We even go so far as to act as though the neighborhood we live in, the car we drive, the job I have, the title on my job, and the list goes on and on of things that make us uh, get lifted up in pride. Now, pride is manifested in ways such as lofty airs. We distance ourselves from people that we feel to be less than we are. We claim to be reserved as the reason for us being so standoffish and often in disrespect or dis disapproval of others, not wanting to mix with those that we feel are of lesser importance than we are. Now, Daniel chapter 4, th th verse 37 speaks clearly by reminding us that those who walk in pride, God is able to humble. Now, let's boil all of the fat off of the definition of pride and see what's left for us, what we can really take home with us and uh, apply in our daily living. Pride is when Satan works his craftiness in us and uses his trickery on us mentally, and before we realize what's happening, pride is at work, and we are thinking that we are much better in every way than others. Satan has us looking so intently at ourselves that we lose sight of the fact that he uh, is changing how we see others in reality. Without realizing it, we start thinking other folks are much worse in every way than they really are. We make it easy for Satan to accomplish this because uh, he makes it seem that we can always come out on top in life. Now, who doesn't want to come out on top all the time? Who doesn't want to win at everything at all times? When we think that we have a right to win all the time, we're setting ourselves up for a pride problem. Even preachers and teachers 
must be careful at how we teach and preach that the faith that we have has positioned us to either already be or are well on our way to being better than others. We lose sight of reality and buy into the idea that we deserve more than other folks. We deserve to be higher than other folks. Our name is of more importance than other folks' name. I remember a thing that, that a few months ago that I taught in the pastoral period was uh, something that God uh, considers sin is how we become inconsiderate of others folks. You know, for instance, we can we can act like other folks don't have anything, any, anybody of significance in their family. We act like, uh, as grandparents, we act like our own grandchildren are the only ones that's doing stuff worth listening to. But we've got to learn to recognize pride. And that's why name it and claim it has become so popular. Because we start gazing at what we don't have and forget the scripture. That's Proverbs 10 and 4 says, a slack hand causes poverty. But the hands of the diligent makes rich. A simple way of of saying that is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, most of us are familiar with that by now. It says, and this is the English Standard Version, it says, for I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan for wholeness and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. That's God's plan for us. And we should not think that we are more than God has planned for us to be. Because when we do, we're standing on shaky ground. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. When we start thinking of fooling ourselves into thinking that we are better than, than others, that what we have is better than other folks, uh, what they have, we lose sight of the fact that when we accumulate according to our understanding, we lose sight of the fact that that comes with all kind of sorrows. To be rich based upon what the Lord has made us. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, and he adds no sorrow with it. You don't have to try to figure out how you're going to manage it, what, what uh, uh, financial planner you need getting a lawyer and all of this kind of stuff. I'm not saying that that's not, if you got that much money, you, you need to, to do things like that. But don't think that that, or don't even act like that makes you better than anybody else. Don't go around talking about what you have. But learn to, to thank God in all things. When we weave our web to it, obtain or get ahead in life, we are only working out of pride and it doesn't lead to a good end. That's why prosperity, preaching and teaching should cause an alarm to go off in our head because it's not based upon what the whole Bible says about prosperity. There's nothing wrong with prosperity, but the way that you allow prosperity to become who you are, that's a problem. We don't even mind paying mega bucks to be told how good we are or we are going to be if we do such and such a thing. Pride makes it easy to believe what is not the truth. 
It was pride that lifted King Nebuchadnezzar up in his own eyes, and it was God that brought him down low. Daniel chapter 4, beginning with verse 28, we read, All of this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence for the glory of my majesty? And while the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. You and uh, you shall be driven from among men and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field and you shall be made to eat grass like ox. And seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the words were fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men. He lost all that he had and ate grass like an ox. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird claws. Now, when, 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 when Nebuchadnezzar truly recognized who had made him, who he was, had given him what he had, and acknowledged God in his life, then, beginning in verse 34 of Daniel chapter 4, we find where he's restored. It says, at the end of the day, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. In other words, my senses. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing as he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? In other words, we can't cause God to do anything that's not in his will, and we can't stop him from doing anything that's in his will. Verse 36 says, at the same time, my reason returned to me and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty my, and splendor returned to me. And my counselors and my Lord sought me. And I was established in my kingdom and still more greatness was added to me. God is the one that lifts up. And we must remember that he's the one that's well able to bring us down. Nebuchadnezzar says, I praise and extol and honor the king of heaven for all his works are right and his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. The lesson is that we should never allow pride to lift us up where we can't keep us. Psalm 75 verse 7 says, But it is God who executes judgments, putting down one and lifting up another. Psalms 51 and 17 says, The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. 
Oh God, you will not despise. I like the, the way the message version puts it. He says, uh, I learned God worship when my pride was shattered. And when our pride has been shattered, then and only then will we truly learn to worship and praise God for who he is and what he is doing or has done in our lives. Proverbs 11 and 2 says, when pride comes, then comes shame but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 29 and 23 says, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Proverbs 6 and 17 says, a proud look is one of the things that God hates. There's seven things, but a proud look is one of them. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And then verse 19 says, it's better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to, be, to, than to divide the spoil with the proud. Jesus wants us, like he did his disciples, to grasp the significance and seriousness of this lesson of pride that it is not what goes into the body, but pride is one of those things that comes out of the heart that defiles each of us. And lest we think more, more highly of ourselves than we ought to, we must remember what Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, lest we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Even Jesus came down to where we were. And he did it so that we could go up where he was. He became what we were so that we could become what he is, the righteousness of God. So beware of the danger of pride. And that's all I've got for this week. I thank you for joining us once again. I realize that you had many options, but you chose to join us and we are appreciative. Me, the pastor of Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated and all of the wonderful members appreciate everybody that might not be one uh, or a member of Mount Sinai, we thank you for joining. And Mount Sinai, as always, have I told you lately that I love you? Well, if I haven't, I truly do because of your faithfulness and truthfulness to God and his word. Let us pray and then I'm out of here. Our Heavenly Father, now that we've heard a portion of what you have to say about pride. Help us to use it as a light in darkness to give good examples of how you want us to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the Lord's will, we'll see you next week. Take care and love on somebody, but hug at a distance. We don't want to catch the COVID-19. See ya.